sponsor for today's video, Established Title. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It's a project based on historic Scottish customs where landowners are referred to as lords or ladies. Just think about it real quick. How cool would it be to officially be able to call yourself a lord or lady and put it on your credit cards or your plane ticket? It could say lord in front of your name on your credit card. This is a legitimate opportunity to actually get that title. So if you wanna officially change your name to Lord or Lady, Established Titles is offering to get at the minimum one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland and will be awarded this official certificate with a crest. Your certificate will have a unique plot number so you can see exactly where your land is. And the first 200 people to purchase a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot. On top of that, Established Titles plants a tree with every single order and they work with global charities, One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. If you're wondering, this is very affordable. It makes a great last minute gift. I actually got this one for my dad. I'll be giving it to him for Christmas. And right now, Established Titles is offering you guys a 10% discount if you use the code PONGA. That's an additional 10% off if you go to establishedtitles.com forward slash ponga to get your gifts now and help support the channel. My breakfast here is 6 o'clock. Just got pretty much everything loaded up. And we're going to get rolling. Ready to go. Oh, look, there's a coyote right there. Cruising the shoreline. Rock and roll. All right. Well, good morning. Welcome back. We're gonna start with some jigging this morning. I'm gonna throw this eel down here. See if we can draw something big up. Someone might have already hit this spot earlier. Early. Oh, yeah. Got one. Surprised no jacks. Yeah. Nothing at the first spot. Not going to jump in here, though. We're going to wait for cleaner water. Ooh, I see fish. Yep. All right, second spot. We're on the chesty cam now. We're gonna give it a couple jigs and see if we can catch some. If not, then we're gonna get suited up and hop in the water. All right, well, nothing. Woo, it is hot. Yeah. Good morning, welcome back. My name is Braden Sharon. If you guys are new here, I do a lot of offshore fishing and spear fishing out of my ponga boat. And today we are gonna be doing some spear fishing, maybe a little fishing, we've jigged a couple rigs, um, but we don't really need a whole lot of meat. Yesterday I went out with Hunter and we shot our fish. We got some red snapper and a cobia. Today we don't really need to get any fish for the freezer. We're just gonna shoot something to cook on the boat. I brought a little propane burner. Um, so really we're just gonna poke around, dive around, explore, check out what is underneath the surface and enjoy the day. We are blessed with another 
amazing day out here on the Gulf of Mexico. So yeah, not a huge game plan. We're just gonna dive around and maybe shoot a fish or two. We're gonna do a nice, chill, relaxed half day. It's gonna be a pretty gnarly next week of hardcore diving. So I figured might as well get a little bit of rest before that. So yeah, we're gonna get suited up and hop in the water. Kings. Oh, those are kingfish, dude. Kingfish down below us. Dude, oh yeah, check them out. Oh. Oh yeah, bunch of kingfish. That ready? Hold oh, on. And welcome back underwater at the offshore oil rigs. So as I said, we are just looking for lunch today. Nothing giant. This one is going to be quite the contrast from the Kuber video. So if you're expecting giant fish, this is not the video to watch. And honestly, I'm really just trying to minimize work on this day. I'm not trying to wear myself out. We're getting up early in the morning and then I'm diving on the following days after. Typically, I'm out all day long offshore when we're filming these videos and from cleaning the boat and gear to clean fish and then vacuum sealing it all and then dumping footage, clearing cards, mm -hmm. charging GoPro batteries, camera batteries. It's a process. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. I want to have some time when we get mm -hmm. back to get situated, get everything organized for the rest of the week. But with that said, underwater we are greeted with some pretty decent visibility up at the surface. Kind of a blue-green mix. We've got some schooling mangroves suspending up here. But I'm going to wait and see if I can find something different before I plug a mangrove snapper. Hunter just said he was going to take one right there. But really, I want to go explore the bottom a bit before I shoot. As I mentioned, I only want a fish or two, so I'm going to be very, very selective. I can take a mangrove here right off the bat, but I kind of want to look for a red snapper and or just see what's down there somewhere around the bottom that I might want to shoot. So I'm going to be patient, scope everything out, and really just take my time with this because we got plenty of targets swimming around that aren't going anywhere. We got these spade fish, sheep's head, those mangroves, and even bluefish. At this point, it's pretty early in the summer, and down here in Texas in the Gulf, our diving is pretty seasonal, so every year I got to kind of get back into it as far as doing deeper, longer dives, because we have a really long dry period that can be almost a year. With a few exceptions of diving here and there, in the fall or spring but really I haven't done a whole lot of deep depth diving yet this summer so I'm kind of trying to work myself back into it and that means I need a little bit longer to warm up so by this point I'm starting to stretch the lungs I'm making a dive here the bottom is around 60 foot there's a good cloud of murk as you can see, but if you 
push a little bit further through it, it kind of opens up down here at the bottom. This doesn't always happen. It doesn't happen at all the rigs, but there's certain rigs that I dive that consistently or um, more often have this where it'll clear up right at the bottom. So I'll be brave enough to push through knowing that it will clear up. Pretty cool. It's real murky still, but you can see there's some toad mangrove snappers, sheep's heads, spade fish as usual, but really a whole lot of debris down here. There's a lot of broken rig parts down the bottom, barnacles that have floated down, and I think that's really why the bottom is kind of clean right there is because there's not just mud that will get silted up. There's some sort of hard substrate keeping it from murking up too, too bad compared to other rigs or the natural bottom. So here there's a big school of kingfish out in the distance. I mean, that is a lot of kingfish. But we are in state water right now and can't shoot game fish. Also, I don't need a big kingfish for lunch. And I also don't want to eat a kingfish for lunch. They're not my favorite fish to eat. I'd much rather eat a snapper or a grouper. And by grouper, I'm mainly talking about these little rock hinds that sit on the rig legs. I'm not talking big gags or big scamps. We don't really see a whole lot of those here in Texas, at least in the shallow water. So like I said, I'm really taking my time diving each corner of the rig to check things out. It's pretty murky, so it's hard to get an idea of what's all hanging around on one dive so I gotta kinda divide it up and dive different sections. Here we see a big red fish, big black drum, and then a nice mangrove. And there is another school of kingfish. Really, really fishy to this day and fun to dive. Just so far, I'm being pretty patient. And honestly, I don't feel like shooting one of those big mangroves down there at the bottom where it can get all tangled up because I don't feel like going down and extracting it. I want something nice and easy, something I can just shoot and not have to worry about getting all wrapped up down at depth. Don't have much real line on this one, but shouldn't need much. Gonna go in with the shorty gun since it is significantly dirtier at this spot. Alright, I'm going in. As you can tell, the water is not great. We got a super chalky milk color but on my first dive I go down and on this first set of cross beams I spot the perfect fish to cook and eat on the boat hey perfect lunch right under me that being a rock hind grouper now I missed the shot on camera but hunter had already gotten a mangrove snapper at this point so I was hoping to get something different. So this really just lined up perfectly. 
So I unload two of my bands to avoid smashing my spear on the rig, make my dive, and begin the stalk. These fish can be pretty spooky. So the way I go about it is I go down really nice and slow and just kind of creep as slowly as I can along the legs until I'm in range. Perfect. And that is about as selective as you can get. Picked out exactly what I want to eat, and we've got lunch secured. And as usual, I brain it, bleed it, and I'm actually going to gut it also. I'll catch y'all on the top side. Right there is lunch, baby. <laughs> that big barracuda was sitting right above it. <laughs> kept coming up and checking us out. Woo! Sweet, dude. That's that is uh, about as good as we can get for quantity of meat that we want and quality. Right there. This is a rock kind grouper for those of y'all who are unfamiliar. They reside on the rig legs. Not on all rigs, but some rigs they like more than others. This one we got lucky on and found a couple. You got to kind of stalk them though. They're really smart. As soon as you kind of lunge to take a shot, oftentimes they'll spook. Dude, this dude's stomach is... What's in there? Looks like crab. Crabs. Crab. There's tons of crabs. Crab. In there. Look at all that. That's what you do. Get a bunch of tiny. Look at all of them. Yeah, here. That's what you get for bait. Oh, there's another one. Hunter is gutting his mangrove that he shot earlier. Didn't get it on camera, but look what is in the belly. Pulled about eight of them out. Full little, little boat. Crabs. There's another one. Well, dude, there was a bunch of hoss mangroves down at the bottom. I bet you that's how They're they got so big. They were munching on. They were munching on all the crabs on the bottom. As I said in the intro, today's a chill day. Just staying close. We're not going to be out all day. If you guys weren't familiar, most of our offshore trips um, all day long, from way before the sun comes up to usually dark. So uh, it'll be nice to get back in early. Also, we don't need a bunch of fish. Super good eating. You could eat these raw. If you guys saw, you were there um, this, I guess it was winter, February or March? Probably February. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. We ate one of these raw. You and Blaine. Yeah, we ate one of these raw and they're really good. But I do have a burner today, propane burner, and we're going to cook this thing up, eat it for lunch, and that will be the video. Here's the stove. You guys have seen me cook this before. I've said I've wanted to cook fish offshore. Um, but we're always going so hard, you know, looking for certain fish that I never really stop to do this. We don't get to come offshore all the time, so we try to take advantage of all the time we get, which is another reason why we don't. Because we can always just cook on land. Today is the perfect day to do this. Basically, I'm just going to cook the fish in tin foil. Have some seasoning in here. That's good. We got salt, pepper, and then some 
some secret stuff. This did not come out of a deer stand. This is actually olive oil. And then we got some lime. So should be pretty good. So I usually just, you know, clean the fish, but I'll leave the skin attached back here at the tail and I'll just flip it over and I'll use that as kind of leverage to skin it. There you go, first fillet done. Look at that. These things actually have like surprisingly pretty good amount of meat on them for not being that big. I decided to get the throat on this thing. It actually has a little bit of meat. We ought to be able to pick that off. But other than that, rock kind grouper from ocean to boat to our mouths. All within probably 30 minutes. And that will feed the other fish. This we will eat. Time to fire up the grill. So far we're in business. Oh yeah. Olive oil is starting to seep in there. Get the munchies back there, bud. <laughs> He's the hunter's pulling out a pop tart before his meal. Oh yeah, we almost forgot. We almost forgot the final ingredient, Hunter. You got the lime. Almost forgot. We're not doing ceviche. We are cooking it, but a little lime. It's always a good little touch. Yeah. There we go. Got some oil seeping down in that one corner. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh oh. Okay, well, that's a lot better right there. Yeah, it's that corner right there. Holy cow. Oh, there's a hole a bone went through. Well, how about that? First time cooking on the Ponga, having a little seepage down there because we poked a hole in this thing, but. Grouper on the propane burner. Oh yeah. Got grouper throats, two grouper fillets, two big nuggets. Got a nice little plate going here. That is delicious looking. Oh yeah, dude, it's getting super flaky. Got a little char on the bottom, but. Extra flavor. Ah, uh, should have brought some tortillas. Oh, yeah. Fish tacos right now. A little bit of pico. That would smack. Boom, shakalaka. First bite going in. Mm. Yeah, that seasoning. That seasoning actually helps it. A little charred. Like a, it's, it tastes like it's smoked. Yeah. It tastes like we smoked it. But, I'll take it. There's a throat meat. That is fresh fish. As fresh as you're gonna get. Dude, you gotta try that. The throat. Super tender. No, that's good. That like, tastes a lot like a smoked fish. Mm -hmm. That hint of lime in there too, so good. Just like that, we are done. Didn't last long at all, but <clears throat> I'd say that was a success. Well, that is about all she wrote. Quick half day trip. We are going to get out of here, get back, and you guys stay tuned. We got some cool videos this following week that I'm gonna be filming. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave me some feedback down in the comments below. Let me know what y'all think about the offshore catch clean cooks because this is pretty easy to do. I don't have to go out, you know, searching for any crazy fish. I can just come out close, shoot something edible, and then cook it. Obviously, we're gonna make we're gonna make it better in the future if we keep doing this. We'll get some recipes going, we'll be more prepared, I'll have some cool stuff to mix up. Hopefully y'all enjoyed the video. Once again, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so down below. We've got a lot more offshore stuff coming at you so yeah thanks again catch y'all later one last thing before we go i want to give you guys a quick update uh, but regarding the video 
in the past you guys have given great feedback on the days that say we didn't really shoot a whole lot or there wasn't a whole bunch of action so I want to make that a point to include the days that aren't grand slams if you will uh, uh, just really wasn't the day for a big sin so Hopefully you guys still enjoy it. Let me know if you do. If you have any questions regarding the video, uh, spear fishing, anything like that, let me know down in the comments section below. With that said, I just want to fill you guys in on the hiatus of videos. I posted an update on the community page, but if you missed it, I filmed a ton of videos this summer. I have an entire archive of videos that are in the works. So now that prime time's wrapping up, I'm catching up, but I am a full-time college student, so that's kind of putting a lag on it. But I just want to let you guys know we got videos coming, doing stuff I've never done before, as well as shooting new species I've never shot. And one last thing before I go, I just wanted to talk about the Cabrera briefly. I'm going to make a future video fully dedicated to talking more about that. There's a whole lot more that went into the story and to talk about than I went into that video, even though it was an hour long. <music> So yeah, that's all I've got for this one. Hopefully this wasn't too long and drawn out, and I will catch y'all in the next one.